Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. In today's full length featured review, we'll be going over the brand new Sager NP8356. The primary highlights for this particular model is going to be that it's a 15.6 inch screen with a 144Hz refresh rate. It's a thin and light model so it makes it easy to get around. It does feature the NVIDIA RTX 2070 desktop edition so it does not have the toned down Max-Q edition. And compared to most of the other RTX laptops that we have recently reviewed, it's very affordable. So if you find yourself interested in this particular laptop by the end of the video, make sure you check out the video description for the product page link and you can check out the current pricing and availability. So onward with our review, we'll start things off with our unboxing. So you can see we do have the traditional double box being used here. The outside box is a plain cardboard box with our interior box, not too much different than that. We can get our laptop out right away. It was protected with a very large portion of foam, so it's very protected during shipping. Setting our laptop aside, there's a couple of other things we're gonna have to dig out of our box. So right behind the laptop, we have the package that has the warranty information and a lot of the system information. You'll see here that within that bag, we have the cleaning cloth, which is traditionally between the screen and keyboard, but here it's chosen to be packaged separately. Also, another really nice thing they've included is a USB thumb drive. So this probably has the system drivers on it. But of course, if you're really going to update the drivers, you might want to go check out the web page and make sure you're getting the newest versions. Now, as for the actual product manual, this is definitely one of the more thicker manuals that we've seen in quite some time. Most companies tend to go towards digital documentation these days, but definitely Sager decided to give you everything in the traditional paper format. And that is not all. Of course, we have a few more things to pull out of our box. This is a SD card blank. That way you can keep your SD card slot nice and protected from any kind of dust. And as we dig out the remaining pieces of our kit from the box, we have our power cable, which will be responsible for attaching to our power adapter and the actual power adapter itself. Upon an up close and personal inspection, you can take a look and see that this is advertised as a 230 watt power adapter. So with the unboxing complete, it's time to move into taking a look at our laptop itself. So we have a few extra protective pieces to remove, a little bit of information about our one year warranty. And we'll move on over to our segment where we get into the size and weight. So the NP8356 is going to be one of our thin and light laptops. As you can see, the laptop alone comes in at five pounds and 12 ounces. And if you're gonna be traveling with the entire kit, which is gonna be the power adapter and the laptop together, you're at a total weight of seven pounds and 10 ounces. So here we are with our laptop powered on for the first time. And upon first look, you'll see that this looks like it's a very condensed area. And that's because the ultra thin bezel on the screen means that this 15.6 inch laptop fits more like a 14 inch laptop and the keyboard shows that accordingly. So we do have the RGB backlit keyboard here with our touchpad. You can see we have individual left and right click buttons, which is always nice to see. Another thing you might notice of difference in this particular area of the laptop is we have no giant sticker that advertises brand name features. No killer wireless, no steel series keyboards. That means we don't have to pay for the brand name pieces and therefore the overall cost of the laptop gets to be cheaper for you, the consumer. So very great for those who are cost conscious customers. Now that said, even without exclusive brand name features, the Sager laptops always get the job done because we still have the same Intel CPUs and Nvidia GPUs as all the other laptops out there. So before we get into proving that all true with our performance benchmarks, let's take a moment and look at our interfaces. 
On the left hand side of our laptop, we're going to have a USB 3.0 port and two 3.5 millimeter audio connections. One's for your headphones and one's for your microphone. On the front, we're going to find our SD card slot. So this is where you can place your SD cards from your cameras and other equipment. Moving on over to the right hand side, you'll find a USB 3.1 port, which is a type C connector and another USB 3.0 port using the traditional type A connector. Now, as we circle around to the back of the laptop, we have quite a bit of connectivity back here. We have the RJ45 jack there for the local network connectivity, an HDMI output, a mini display port output, a USB 3.1 port, which is the type C connector actually running display port, another type A USB 3.0 port, and of course the main power adapter port for charging your laptop and running off of mains power. Now with our connectivity out of the way, here's one last view of the laptop, 360 degree spin just to take a look at the form factor, colors, shape, and size before we move into our measurements. So for measurements, we have quarters on the screen for scale. And of course we have a trusty ruler to show us our actual measurements. The back of the laptop comes in at less than one and a half inches. And the front of the laptop is just slightly over one inch. So you can see we do have the traditional wedged shape here where the back is a little bit higher up than the front, which helps with typing ergonomics and also with cooling. So while we did offer a good view of the thin bezels earlier as we are looking at the insides of the laptop, here's the actual measurements of those as well, so you can see how they stack up. On the ruler, we're showing just a little over a quarter of an inch on thickness, and again, that is what really gives this laptop its characteristics as being so small when you're packing it away or carrying it around. Now moving on to our system specs, we're in the device manager where we can see the equipment that's responsible for our performance numbers. The NVIDIA RTX 2070 is included, which is of course the full desktop edition as we mentioned earlier. Also paired with the Core i7-8750H for our CPU. The monitor panel ID is here on screen for you to look up and that is a 144 Hertz refresh rate at seven millisecond response time. This is a 1920 by 1080p resolution screen. Also, for all the gamers out there, you'll be happy to know this screen does support NVIDIA's G-Sync technology, so that paired with the 144Hz refresh rate is going to make this a really great gaming experience. Now it is time for us to start taking some of our benchmark scores, and we're going to get our baselines down first. A sound meter shows that we have about 25.7 decibels coming from the left side of the laptop. Moving over to the rear, we're showing those exact same numbers. And of course, the left fans don't have to run the same speed as the right fans. And here we do show that the right fans are a little bit quieter at this time. Now, while these numbers might be kind of hard to qualify right now as far as what they mean, if you watch a couple of other reviews that we've done, we do the same test on all of our laptops and it makes it very easy to compare like systems to each other. So with the baseline noise figures being one thing that we want to check out, we definitely want to get our baseline temperatures both the internal system temperatures and the external system temperatures. So here we are with our infrared camera, so we can take a look at how those temperatures line up as far as the surface of our laptop. You can see the keyboard is definitely giving off a good amount of heat there, and that's good for ventilating the system, especially on a smaller laptop. The areas where your hands are gonna to be touching, those seem to be remaining nice and cool. And that's what we wanna see as well, because we don't want sweaty hands while we're using our laptop. We'll come back and check these temperatures again once the system is under load and see if they have maintained. Now seeing the keyboard used as a ventilation device is great, but of course the most important thing we wanna see is that the actual cooling vents are being used. And that's the hottest, brightest spots that we see on screen. And that's a very good thing. The hotter these areas are, that means the system is getting rid of the heat and not holding on to it. We can even see the table itself is heating up near those locations. We will definitely see those temperatures go up as we put the system under load with our benchmarks. And it'll be interesting to see if the one side or the other gets a lot hotter because the CPUs and the GPUs generally don't tend to run at the same temperatures and they are independently cooled usually on one side and the other. 
it is now time for our benchmarks to begin. So we're running 3D Mark right now, and we're going to go back and check our baselines and see how they've changed. You can see the noise levels have definitely gone up. The fans have spooled up to the point where it's about 63 decibels on the left side. And those numbers are more or less the same whether we're on the rear or the side of the laptop. To the other side of the laptop, it is also about 64. So unlike the baselines where we had it not under load, this side was more quiet. Under load, this side is a little bit louder. Getting back to the external thermals, here we are with our infrared camera again. And you can see the hotspots haven't really changed. The keyboard is still letting a lot of heat out, which is great. And our palm area is still nice and cool. So those are the things we definitely want to see. What would be very interesting is to see how hot the exhaust has gotten now that the fans have definitely ramped up to get rid of the extra system heat. Now here on screen you can see what looks like basically jet streams of heat that have gone across the table from both the side and the back showing how much heat is being pushed out of the system and how hard the fans are working. The temperature readings are a little bit hard to get exactly but we're seeing spikes up to about 50 degrees celsius on the left hand side and over to the right hand side we're about 50 degrees celsius here as well but the real system temperatures that we want to see are going to be the internal temperatures based on our sensors. So the Firestrike benchmark has finished and it's coming in with a score of 16,731 which is great and right on target for the hardware that we have inside. Now over to the temperatures, we can see that the CPU got up to about 89 degrees Celsius on the hottest core, which is actually really good. So that's not too high of a temperature at all. And now a little bit lower down, we can see our GPU temperature. And that came in at a maximum temperature of 68 degrees Celsius, which is absolutely great. So the laptop is doing a very good job of keeping everything nice and cool and the performance numbers are checking in exactly as expected. So Firestrike will not be the only benchmark that we run today. We're also doing Cinebench R15. Now as this finishes up, we're going to get a score of frames per second and the CPU score from the Cinebench. And here you can see that our scores came in at 112.64 frames per second and our Cinebench score is 1,263. And down below we also have the Cinebench rankings. The next benchmark is going to be the sound levels for our speaker system. Another feature that we wanted to make sure that we covered in the review is those who are wondering what the fingerprint symbol was on the touchpad earlier, we do have a built-in touchpad fingerprint scanner. 
and this works pretty much like the iPhone's Touch ID. Now it's time for us to move into the very last segment of our review today, which is going to be the system disassembly. So we're going to kind of jump ahead and do a major disassembly right off the bat to show you what's inside of the system. So here we are now with all of the screws taken out. We also removed our keyboard and our battery. You can see what's now behind the keyboard, including the system fans. And that's why we had such great ventilation through the keyboard area in really great system temperatures. Now, as far as the back of the laptop, the small area in the bottom left hand corner is for your battery and that's easy to get to. But once you take all the other screws off, the entire bottom panel comes off. So as for what's in store underneath of everything, we have the large cooling fans in the corners of the laptop. You can see the large copper heat pipes and the amount of copper used for cooling the CPU and GPU. Located right next to that is going to be our two system RAM slots, and those are both fully occupied currently. In the bottom corner, we have our 2.5 inch mechanical mass storage drive and our smaller M2 form factor SSD. So we're not going to stop here. The disassembly is not yet complete. The next step for us was to take all these smaller pieces off. So the system RAM, the SSD, our mechanical storage drive, everything has been removed. And now we're gonna be able to remove our cooling system. Underneath of all that copper, you're gonna find the onboard video card and CPU. So at this point, we can pretty much say that we've done the detailed disassembly of our laptop and we have come to the end of our review. So for our closing remarks, we just want to say that we hope you enjoyed our detailed review today of the Sager MP8356. So if you think you're interested in this laptop and you had any questions that our video was not able to answer for you, then please feel free to ask us down below in the comments section and we'll be sure to answer those questions for you. And please don't forget that the video comments is not the only way to get a hold of us. If you need some personalized help, then feel free to contact us directly by phone or email. And lastly, don't forget that while the video has a ton of great information, our product page has a lot more as well. So please check out the video description and you'll find the product page link and that'll take you to our page where we have the current pricing and availability as well as the full system specs. So once again, we just want to remind you that this was Gentech PC and we'll see you next time.